Bonjour tout le monde. My name is Dr. Nisi Chuse from Ashes to Beauty, A to B. We are talking gender-based violence. We are talking femicide. It is happening around the world. It is happening everywhere. Today we have women here with us who will tell us more about what is this gender-based violence? How does it start? And when you are in it or you find yourself in it, what must you do? A very good day to you all ladies. Can you please tell our viewers at home your name and where you come from? My name is Tracy Bakunin. I live in El Dorado Park. Okay. My name is Nobantu Msibi. I am from Africa Dignity Skills. We are based in Dobsonville, in Salt. Hi, my name is Crisalda Yosta and um, I come from El Dorado Park and I belong to Phenomenal Woman, that's an NGO based in Cape Town. Thank you so much. We are talking gender-based violence. It's happening everywhere. It's happening in all the country around the whole world. Would you tell our viewers at home, what is this gender-based violence? Gender-based violence is violence, it's what the word explains, violence in gender amongst genders, mainly targeted at our women and what we have seen escalating these days are our young women also being falling victims to gender-based gender -based violence. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I look at gender-based violence, I look at it as an act, an act of violence on an individual or an act of threat of violence to an individual based on their gender. Therefore, it happens to both men and women. It happens in private spaces and in public spaces. Mm -hmm. However, the majority, if you look at the evidence, mm -hmm. the majority of people that are exposed to gender-based violence mm -hmm. are women mm -hmm. and girls. What is gender-based violence? As my colleagues were saying, yeah, um, it's an act against a uh, woman, mainly. Mm. Uh, but then there's one community we left out. It's also the LGBT community mm. that is also um, being affected by uh, gender-based violence. So it's a female on it's female and male on male. Female on female, male on male. Like same sex. Same sex. Same sex. Mm. All right. So how does it start? How would you know that now Mm -mm. This is a gender-based violence that is happening to me. I think for me, when you look at the, the root cause of gender-based violence, you can really hold it down to the inequality within the society, mm -hmm. the insubordination of women, mm. therefore not given the rights to be who you are, and therefore you are seen in a certain way because you are a woman. You are given certain powers because you are a woman. You are stripped of certain powers because you are a woman. So the inequality for me is the main thing and therefore it builds on human violation, human rights violation. For me, it becomes the crux of where we can look at gender-based violence. But now as you're saying that, I'm thinking now it's no longer gender-based violence only, but it's gender-based violence and feminism. Mm -hmm. And the kids that are dying, can be my children. Mm -hmm. It's any age. Mm -hmm. So the, that portion, how do you explain it? Femicide is a very a delicate, sensitive mm. uh, topic. Also, there's uh, IPV, intimate partner violence, which is very closely linked to femicide, whereby the, 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 the true victims do become the people who are left behind, which are the children. Where do we take them to with refuge, you know, in terms of because this is not going to be for life, remember? Mm -hmm. The parents are no longer there. So for me, uh, when, when I look at, at, at femicide, um, it's, it's really the, 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 the pain, the, 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 the hatred, the, the, the power that one feels I can take over someone's life and this person being the person that at one point you declared love to no, no. and saying this person, I love this person, I declare that I will protect, I will nurture. 
but mm. for some reason it comes to a point where you feel you have the power to can take that life. What can be the cause of that? Is the problem with us women or is the problem with men? Sometimes we, we don't even know that we are in the situation. Mm. Sometimes we are not allowed to speak up. We are not allowed to say to my sister, you know, this is what happened last night. So it's one of, it's uncertainty in most cases until maybe you hear it or you see it on the news and it's like, this is what I'm going through or this is what's been happening to me over a period of time. Sometimes um, not the freedom to, to say, that's me. Mm. Just in your own voice, that's yeah. me. Because of stigma, because of, he said, she said, you know, sometimes the, the positions that we carry in society, maybe I'm a teacher, maybe I'm this person everybody looks up to yeah. in, in, this, in the common place that I love. Not that I do something specific, but people just think they have this concept of me that I have everything together. And yet I must raise my hand now and say I'm a victim of gender violence. I believe in some cases as well, it comes from the mean side. Mm. Uh, family history of um, being in an abusive household. Perhaps uh, the father was abusive in yeah. that house and he had to go through that with his mom. Mm. And then it it's, it's like a generational thing. So it's he never dealt with it. He never got assistance in that regard uh, to get counseling and then it continues it just continues because there is research out there that looks at the concept of when a victim becomes a villain because mm. you were abused you then in turn become the abuser mm. so, yeah. because of your socialization how things were done and therefore you then become the perpetrator so it, 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 it is true to say even a woman can do that mm. because you have been abused and you don't know better. You then abuse the next person because that's all that you know. Mm. The type of love that you think that is love, that's all that you know, you don't know better. We are finding ourselves in this problem of gender-based violence and we don't even know who to blame or how to blame, as you said. Mm. I'm this person and I'm even afraid to raise my hand and say, me too, it's happening to me. If anybody finds themselves in this position, what is the first thing that they need to do in order for themselves to be ready to get out of this relationship or out of this abuse? Many times you find yourself in a situation, but you are not ready. Mm -hmm. You know, so the readiness, the acknowledgement and um, admitting All right. that, that this is happening to me or this is what I'm going through. So we'll say the first step is to admit that you're in trouble. True. That would be the very first step. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really speaking out. But like she says, you sometimes don't know. I've, I've, I've got a, a, a story that I can think of. Yeah. Of a young woman who receives flowers mm. from a partner. And it's not her birthday. She says, it's not my birthday and I received a bunch of flowers. It's because yesterday she, he slept me and I received flowers again. It's not our anniversary. Mm -hmm. It's because he punched me. Right. And today I'm receiving flowers and they're on top of my coffin. Mm. So it is that socialization to mm. say, you, you don't know. You, you think that's how things are done mm. and becomes a building block, a building block of acceptance and acceptance. Hence I say, speaking out, finding those safe spaces where you can communicate and saying these are the things that I see. Is it normal? It can be common. It does not necessarily mean it is normal. normal. Yeah, because some of the stories they will say, I knew about it, but I do not know where to go. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have places or can somebody say, at least there's a place that I know where I can go to if I run out of this house? We are very blessed to have um, in our community yeah. to be able to work hand in hand with our local police station mm -hmm. whereby it has been identified to say that gender-based violence is escalating within our community and we need to have safe spaces, uh, places where, where women can voice and also to enable us 
as law enforcement mm -hmm. to 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 start tackling this issue so um where we are from the local police station actually wants to partner with us and also um stakeholders in and surrounding areas in El Dorado Park whereby we can work closely together get the necessary um ref, ref, referral so referrals. when you say partner with us who mm. is us like i said that the stakeholders know. like um oh. your 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 support yes. your um psych psych uh, counseling all right uh, psychology um social work you know mm -hmm. to get all to network all these resources okay. and and find like a step by step when this happens this is whom we speak to and we follow up we follow through mm -hmm. because what happened in the past is like these things tend to fall through the cracks mm -hmm. or they just disappear into thin air and we don't really know from uh cradle to grave you know from no. grassroots level as to say where did this end did we did we really do the full mm. did we really do the full job has everything been done in a specific way so police want to come on board mm -hmm. but it's just that we need manpower yes. so we are blessed to be able to have that relationship with our local police station whereby we can work hand in hand starting to tackle the situation head on Naman, to tell us about your the NPO. You said you are from Africa. Africa Dignity, Skills and yes. Development. So what do they do? Mm -hmm. we, we, we do not believe in the word of support, the support group, because it means people have to identify that I need support. So this is open to anyone in the community where we bring people together and we discuss issues. And we really don't even start on gender-based violence because just that word, it labels people and therefore other people feel it's not for me. So we open it up to say we're going to be discussing issues. And out of these issues, because we are touching on very sensitive issues, the victims mm. will come out, out of those discussions because it's an open and a non-judgmental space yeah. where people or a group of women discuss the general issues that they are facing on a day-to-day -day in their community. Mm. And from then onwards, you are able to unpack when it comes to gender-based violence to say, what are the signs? What are these things that we are seeing in the community? What are we seeing with our young women? What is happening? If you look at the news, you, you, you look at social media, we are hearing of young women that are killed by their partners. Where does this stem from? What is the cause of that? You discuss those issues mm. and these are based on how people see things because yes, in those spaces mm. we tell them there is no right or wrong answer we mm. just want to hear the different mm. views and things would come up it's, it's because of socialization of young boys it's because of poverty it's lack of education it's unemployment That's it's a whole nice. list of things that come up mm. but all these things become the building blocks and then you look and say what are they root causes, mm -hmm. what are the contributing factors? Because the contributing factors, it's a whole lot of different things depending on the individual. Mm -hmm. And how these then manifest in the types of abuse that we see. Emotional abuse, financial abuse, isolation, and we talk about grooming. To say these things happen on a very slow space where you do not realize to say they're happening. Yeah. You've got a partner who then says, I love you, my darling, but I." I I don't, I don't, I don't like you wearing pants. Oh, okay. You know, I prefer you to wear this, and they start changing you. They start grooming you. Mm -hmm. I don't like your friends, mm -hmm. and they start isolating you. So those you. people that are grooming, is it your partner? Is it your relative? It, Who it, are they? And it, where it, are they? It's it, only a red flag it, in a relationship. That's one of the red flags mm -hmm. that you'll notice mm -hmm. uh, once you start dating someone that uh, is a, an abuser. Mm -hmm. That's one of the red flags. Mm -hmm. It'll start slowly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, then you find women, they're not able to read those mm -hmm. red flags. Yeah, mm -hmm. For them, that is love. Yes. This person takes care of me, mm -hmm. they are nurturing, they are providing for me. Mm -hmm. And it escalates to a point where it becomes, women find it difficult to leave. And there's always some different reason. If I leave, where do I go? I can't exactly. go back home because I'll be told I'm a returned soldier. Yes. yes. My friends are going to laugh at me. I failed mm -hmm. in my marriage. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do with the kids? Mm -hmm. This man is paying school fees. Mm -hmm. We are given shelter. Where am I supposed to go? So there is that limited knowledge of resources that are available. And it is in working with the various stakeholders where you bring these resources available mm -hmm. to the public and mm -hmm. say, there's the police. 
you can report. Mm -hmm. There is social workers that mm -hmm. will assist you. They will place you in a shelter. They will make sure that the kids go to school and you get counseling and you are able to be assisted to can stand on your own. Right. Even to include your family in them understanding why you need to leave the marriage. Yes. Because of your own Because safety. that's where I was going to say now I've got this help, which is a one day thing. I'm going to the police, I'm reporting. Then what after that? I'm not working, I'm not educated. I've never even worked before in my life. What's going to happen to me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hence, we're saying working with the various stakeholders, mm -hmm. you are able to pull all those resources together. Mm -hmm. You find out to say what are, what is lacking, what is missing from this woman's life. Mm -hmm. Where does she need the assistance? Yes. Because in most cases, we try and remedy without understanding to say what does this individual actually mm -hmm. need. Mm -hmm. We want to bandage the wood without understanding to say what is it that the woman mm -hmm. needs. So we create those spaces where the woman is able to reflect. Mm -hmm and be able to can find what help I need. And all of that is a starting point. Even just mm -hmm. talking, mm -hmm. it's a starting point that will build towards leaving this abusive relationship and seeking better interventions. Is it possible that us as women, sometimes we are the spike of this gender-based violence? I am well-educated, I'm any more than you. Then I spike it in my house. Is it possible? There are such instances right. where it happens. Mm -hmm. um, can you say inequality in the relationship or yes, the marriage? Yes. There are instances where it happens. And remember, um, women have very much, they are very privileged these days mm -hmm. in terms of opportunity, mm -hmm. in terms of, um, um, like you've mentioned, salary, mm -hmm. in terms of voicing, yeah. making their opinions known, uh, in terms of speaking out. So the factor is there, but in terms of spiking it, um, not not a proven fact. It's just that women are rising in in that regard. Women know what they want in life, mm -hmm. and somehow it seems like men feel that they are left behind or or not acknowledged. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's there's a bit of a power struggle. So a little bit of my power has been taken away. But not to say that you know that is a con concrete proven fact. It, yeah. it, it is there. It exists in a relationship. Many a times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the research that is out there, there is evidence to say there is a, what is the word? Um, it's, it's not a cause, yeah. but it's, it's, it's a contributing it's factor. factor. Yeah. It's a contributing yeah. factor, but it's not a cause. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there are those opportunities, like if there's, there, there's intimate partner violence, mm -hmm. it increases gender-based violence. If there's income disparity, it increases gender-based violence. If there is a, a difference in the education levels, mm. it increases gender-based violence. Yeah. So that tells you to say, just because someone has got a, a higher education, it does not stop them mm. from being abusive. Yeah. Just because someone earns a lot of money or less money, yes. because mm. there, there is this notion to say, a, a, a man who is unemployed is violent. Mm. Mm. Just as equal as a man mm -hmm. as a girl can be violent. Mm -hmm. So th those are contributing factors, but they are not the cause. The cause. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're still talking. We are still talking gender-based violence. It must stop. It is happening everywhere and anywhere. I want you to look at the camera and talk to that somebody at home. Tell them if you find yourself in this situation, how do you get out? If you find yourself encountering such events, how do you even help your sister, your sibling, your cousin, including your community at large? Our bodies are very amazing. They speak to us. Do research, ask questions, watch television, get information, identify. And the first thing that we can do is be honest to ourselves and acknowledge and say, that is me get help. Our first point of, of getting help is reporting to our local police stations. Okay. I would say that uh, find someone that you can speak to, uh, whether it be a close friend, a sibling, someone you trust, uh, get it out there. And um, second step would be to educate yourself, uh, read online uh, what it's all about. Uh, get information um, from your local uh, support uh, groups, uh, police stations, 
get information on how to go about on getting the assistance that you may require. Nubantu, mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. president said he has mm -hmm. come with a plan. Mm -hmm. A plan for gender-based violence and femicide. Mm -hmm. Would you tell us what is in that plan? And if by just looking and thinking to say, I work with this all the time, this plan is the perfect one. Or oh, it can work. Can gender-based violence numbers that are happening reduce? It, it is quite sad to say there is a plan mm. and yet no one clearly knows what the plan is all about. Mm -hmm. It's left with the top people mm. or the selected few. Yeah. No one in the community knows what the plan is and yet the very people that are affected don't know of the plan. Okay. They are not included in the plan. Mm. They are just there to receive the tools. They are not included in the design of the tools. Mm -hmm. In order to get a solution, I believe you need to go down to the people that are affected yeah. because they know it better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. The president would not know what gender-based violence is, mm -hmm. what it feels like, because he's not living it. Mm -hmm. But go down to the communities and let the community speak out. Yeah. and say this is what we are experiencing these are our challenges and this is what we as the people that are suffering need to see the government do okay. and also with this plan how are we implementing it how are we making sure that it's watertight that it's really uh, uh, effective in the areas where it's needed mm. um yes the plan is there but uh, the the contingency of the plan, how long will it be there and who is it for? Who is it catered for? Mm. How, how is it custom designed? Is it just a pie in the sky that will maybe just be um, something on paper but it never reaches the purpose which it has yeah. been designed for? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, um, <clears throat> yes, the plan was made available. Mm. The, the president, he made a notion that they were going to implement the plan. Mm -hmm. um, most of our people in the community, hence Ubuntu was saying, they are not aware, they don't watch TV, they don't, they don't watch parliament, they don't know, know what's happening. Mm -hmm. So it's very key for them to get the information to the people so that the people can know what is happening and um, the organizations that is working mm -hmm. with GBV, they can educate themselves or get information on how to implement certain things within the communities okay. from the plan. By any chance, do you guys run probably the awareness campaigns where you go into your community and you make them aware of this? Because what they're mm -hmm. trying to do here is to solve the issue on our communities. Mm -hmm. We are the communities. And so in the community, you're the one who knows what is happening. Do you do those campaigns? And who are your targets when you do such campaigns? Um, yes, we do campaign. Mm. Um, we just had a campaign a few weeks ago mm. where we called out women within our complex, women mm. that that we know, uh, women that we live amongst because charity begins at home. Yes. Um, and we also started a very new initiative of Walk a Mile in My Shoes mm. where you will adopt your sister your neighbor mm. that's being affected by GBV. Mm -hmm. So your partner, that sister with somebody that has gone through the same thing, that has overcome, and then that person will be like uh, your personal friend, your, your yeah, my like sister's your mentor, keeper, yes. like your mentor. Mm -hmm. That we just started, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's very new, but we feel that if you as a person has gone through GBV, you, you don't want to just go out and give your story to any, to everyone. Not no. everybody is that. that mm. It's got that kind of personality. So it's good to um, have that one person that you feel that you are comfortable with as a friend. Um, and then you just take it from there maybe for a year. What we also found now is that um, ever since we have started the initiative, yeah. People are very keen, they do not only approach us with gender-based violence issues but other issues as well, things like maybe we were also not aware that this is really alive and it's happening within our communities. 
people who just want to talk um, men even come to us so there mm. is a great need they, they mm. want to participate they want to be part of it they also want solutions they don't want to be seen as these evil monsters yeah. so um we we are failing you in in this but um we are so so looking forward to it mm. because um now it's not only us who are there but reaching out because that is the first thing that we actually want to do we want to reach out and say um if this is happening you you can be able to knock on my door because remember these things happen sometimes at ungodly hours of the day mm -hmm. whereby there's no uh taxi that's gonna drop you there at the police station or you cannot walk from where you are situated so you can knock on my door and people even refer other ladies go speak to her you know that mm -hmm. type of thing yeah. so um People also want to come out and get help. Yes. For us, we are really into the prevention. All right. Upstream. Okay. Um, because yes, there's a lot of people that are working with victims. Okay? Mm -hmm. We really want to focus on the upstream in order to educate people. And that's why we're starting at the grassroots level in saying, even at school, mm -hmm. how you teach kids to say, these are the signs, this is what is happening. And if you see this, if there is this gut feeling mm. that someone has touched you in a way that just makes you feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Yeah. you can't pinpoint and say, this is what happened, but it just feels, mm. speak to someone and never stop until someone listens. Mm. So you can speak to the teacher, you can speak to your aunt, you can speak to someone. There is someone who will hear you mm. because it takes a lot. Like you said, you go to the police station, and then what? Mm -hmm. And people get discouraged. So we encourage mm -hmm. to say, speak out and don't stop mm -hmm. until someone hears you. Because there is someone who will hear mm -hmm. so, yeah. We have spoken that is gender-based violence. It's happening everywhere. Women are in trouble because of this. But we have also heard that men are also coming out. Not all men are monsters. Even the ones that are um, the perpetrators. They want help themselves. So men, let's work this thing out. Everybody, let's work out. Women, speak out and stop the gender violence. This is Dr. Nisi Tusi from Ashes to Beauty, A to B.